want to ask? Um, so we already did that one. So, what are your passions in life? That's clear. I don't. I don't think that. You cannot understand what you're saying. Sorry, she's she's losing her voice. She has a cold. Um, she said, "What are your passions in life?" What are my passions? Mm -hmm. oh. Well, naturally, I love to write. Uh, I um, I love to compose music, and um, um, and. Uh, my passion is my family too. I love them <laughs> to be with them. Uh, but um, um, I uh, I used to be you know I, I used to do very much exercise. I uh, my husband and I used to be a marathon runners <laughs> for about twenty seven years. So my passion is running, but at my age, you know, at eighty nine, I cannot do it anymore. Uh, we run naturally long distances because when you have to prepare uh, yourself for the marathon, then you have to run at least 45 miles each week. And uh, we used to climb the mountains in uh, in uh, Colorado, uh, the highest mountains. We climbed Mount Albert about 28 times through the years with my husband, and other high 14,000. We used to ski in the mountain um, in winter on skis. So we we, uh, we climbed the 13 and 14,000 foot mountains on skis. Uh, we used to, um, to swim on the lakes um, and uh, like five hours. We used to, there's a Lake Lucerne in the northern Wisconsin. That was our favorite lake. It has a beautiful scenery, and the good thing is they don't have any um, any boats on it. And sometimes a few fishermen, you know, are there with the canoe at the side of the lake. And uh, we used to go out and <clears throat> and uh, swim two hours non cut off in the morning, two hours non cut off in the afternoon. Then we would go for another lake for one hour. We were in terrific shape. Uh, we, used to, we used to do long distance biking. I told you about my passions, you know. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot do all those things. But those were our passions. And we used to have a long distance, uh, um, long distance biking tours. Um, we, uh, about 120 miles or so, you know, and, uh, and uh, long distance hiking. We used to hike 20 miles from one city to another. Wow. So me and my husband, we started everything at the same time, and uh, we had lots of fun. Yes, but but right now we can't do those. So right now, my, my passions are to be with my family, my passions are to write. To compose music, you know, and yes, and and to to uh, and I love to read. So reading is one of my passions, and then uh, classical music and operas. That's what we love, you know. Mm -hmm. So right, right now we we are not as active as we used to be because you know the knees are more athletic, <laughs> and so we have to limit ourselves. But I wish I could do all those things now, too. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So what is your other question? Um, how did you handle the events going around you as they're happening during the Holocaust? Well, how did I handle? Well, I tell you, I had to uh, face uh, uh, unusually adverse, uh, unusual adversities and horrible experiences. So how could I tolerate that? Um, first of all, uh, I was uh, a very strong teenager. So the physical strength helped me. Uh, my uncle was a fencing champion of Romania, and he did have children of his own, so I was like his little girl. He introduced me to fencing when I was barely five years old. and. Uh, he realized, I see you better with my long distance glasses. <laughs> and 
uh, um, he realized that I inherited his talent. So he uh, inspired me to be a, a, to be a competitive dancer, and I had to work very hard. At age 12, I was a competitive dancer, dancing with boy opponents and winning both cups. So at age 15, I became junior dancing champion. So when I got to the camps, I was a very strong teenager. I was 18 years old, but uh, I was all muscles, you know. Um, and uh, then uh, I had wonderful family, wonderful parents who uh, uh, who uh, instilled in me, uh, since I was a little girl, my deep faith in God. And uh, the root of my son, of the root of survival, of my survival was my deep faith in God. Um, so I, uh, deep faith in God gave me hope that somehow, in a miraculous way, I will be able to survive because God was all the time at my side. Uh, then uh, my my whole upbringing, I had very strong up. I grew up with very strong principles. Uh, the, uh, my father always told me that. Uh, uh, faith, hope, and love are the strong pillars in life. And uh, he also taught me uh, not to put, not to, uh, uh, not to let hatred enter my heart, no matter what happens, because hatred is an evil force, and uh, the, ultimately it will destroy you. Um, he um, he also taught me to follow the paths of forgiveness, love. And tolerance. So I, I, I was an only child, but I had a big family. We, we, uh, you know, um, and I had many aunts, uncles, cousins. So, so, so I in the camps. Uh, this helped me a great deal. My love for my parents. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I did not want to become. Uh, uh, animalistic. I didn't want that my spirit should be should be uh, destroyed. By no means, my spirituality. How we have in ourselves a great power of spirituality, and uh, that we possess. And if we apply all those principles in life, uh, we uh, can overcome our tough challenges. Now I have a new book. I wanted you to know. Well, this is my book of autobiographical book, Survival, and I hope that you are going to look for it. If you go on Amazon.com, all my books are listed. Uh, actually, this is my 13th book, that, that book. Now, uh, I think you might like this book too, Surviving Hard Times, uh, Holocaust Survivors' uh, uh, Tools for Overcoming life challenges. What do I mean by tools? And that will answer your question too. The tools of survivors, uh, what, I, what I talk about here, I reveal my methods which I devised in order to survive. Uh, you uh, Naturally, my faith in God, that was very strong. Uh, my belief in faith, hope, and love. A positive attitude that helped me. And uh, we have to maintain a, a positive attitude in the worst adversities that we may encounter. And uh, we have to also be able to take suffering uh, for a, uh, so, that, uh, so that we survive. And this was actually my uncle's last words when we were separated in Auschwitz. He said, uh, remember that pain increases our endurance and we have to tolerate pain in order to survive and not fall apart under any adverse situations which we may encounter in our life. Uh, in, in my book, I talk about that, um, the, uh, the, the positive attitude, how do we acquire, how do we practice, how do we maintain and how do we fortify. Because this is a very important thing. Now, um, I should just to give you an example. You know, uh, I survived 
weekends. Three German concentration camps, Auschwitz, Birkenau, Bremen, and Bergen Belsen. All uh, Bergen Belsen was, uh, well, Auschwitz was horrific, Bergen Belsen was horrific, nothing was, uh, was not horrific. Um, but, um, you know, I was in Auschwitz, and Auschwitz was an uh, extermination camp. Uh, it, it, I, uh, when, when I'm going to talk to you, we made an appointment. I am going to, um, on the 8th, isn't it? No. When? When? Well, uh, we have given Jessica. I, yeah, I don't think we decided a day yet. Is there, you said Tuesday or Thursday. Um, is one of those better or worse for you? We, that's a disturbance. Yeah. Can you repeat it? Um, well, I think... You oh, said that you have to talk to... Uh, the other teachers. Yeah. And of course, it's right at the end of the year. Well, is there agreement that it should take place or no? Yes, we do want it to take place. I sent an email yesterday and everyone said, yes, please, we would love for you to talk to us. But the date will have to be five. May 5, because okay. May 7 has been occupied May 7 has since been occupied. we okay. had the discussion. Okay, and perfect. May is too. May 7, May 8 are occupied. Okay. Yeah. So May 5th? May 5. Now, the other thing is, uh, what time should it be? Is it um, um, 11 hour time that is 1 o'clock? Yes, you mentioned that it's 11 hour time. time. Yes, what 11 your time. Or 11? a little bit before, like 10.45 your time. 10.30 or... or uh, they have or lunch at 10.30, but 10.45 or 10.50. 10.45, yeah. good. That would be so good. then we okay. settle it for May 5. Uh-huh. May 5, that's okay. 10.45, that's, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. so, so that, that is good that we should settle that one. Yeah. And, and is, that, is that okay then? I, uh, I, I can um, uh, present you one hour. Yes. On, on my, on One my hour, experience. and then some time for questions. And then, mm -hmm. and then uh, maybe um, twenty minutes or half hour. How much do you need for questions? Twenty minutes is good. Twenty minutes, okay. okay. So that, so then we agree that it's going to be ten forty-five, and then until eleven forty-five. Is it my presentation? And then, and then twenty minutes. Uh, uh, would be the uh, question answer time. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. So, so, so I, uh, I started talking the positive attitude because this will, uh, this will um, answer all your questions. You know, mm -hmm. how did I handle myself? How did I survive? Mm -hmm. What did I do? What? Um, so to give you an example, you know, um, after uh, after seven, I was seven weeks in Auschwitz. It was. A it was a miracle I saw that. And uh, I was a corpse gatherer, and I will tell you everything. Dragging corpses. I was dragging corpses, digging dead space. We, were, we had very vicious SS guards who we were beating you if you, they thought that you don't work fast enough. And uh, um, with starvation diet, I mean, uh, I had, in Auschwitz, I could have died every single day because they were constant. Um, selections, besides the big selections when we arrived, you know, when, when all the people were not considered useful or guests and cremated, um, but there were additional selections, and then you had to strip in front of the, of the selection committee, Dr. Joseph Wenger, the biggest Nazi criminal was the, uh, the, the chief selector, you know, and uh, so if they saw that you are not good for work anymore, you were pointed the left, which meant the gas chambers. So every single week, you had to face the execution squad. Can you imagine living with this? All the, only this one thing uh, that that you didn't know whether you are going to be taken to the gas chambers by the end of the week, you know. And and I was seven weeks there. It was a miracle, just because of what helped me, you know my strengths. That's what I pointed out and when I talk in food. It's very important in life to have physical and emotional strengths. Now the emotional strengths was my upbringing, you know. Uh, I, I thought that I 
should I have respect for life, respect for uh, for 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 my elders, respect for 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 uh, uh, and love and forgiveness and tolerance. I grew up with that. Now I I I said that to myself, they cannot kill my spirit. They cannot control my thoughts. So I have to have good thoughts myself in order to be able to tolerate that. So in for Auschwitz after seven weeks, we were taken to the horrible, the horrible camp of Bergen Bergen. That was, I will talk to you when, when, uh, when I'm going to have my presentation. But that was a dead march, you know, from Bergen, but from Auschwitz to Bergen Bergen. Now, you did not, you didn't get any food, any drinks, whoever collapsed was shot if you couldn't go on. So what helped me there? Well, what, what did I do there? I put myself into another world. I was marching, but my thoughts were, were at, I was at home, I was liberated. I visualized, you know, the visualization. Um, I had to, 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 to create uh, my tools. My my uh, that that I could survive during this march. Half of it, half of us were killed, you know. So so that was those were very strong, uh, uh, very strong points, you know. Um, and uh, and my desire to learn, you see, I had to decide. In normal life, if you are having very difficult situations, or you are in deep depression. I speak here about depression, and how did I survive that? It's very hard. We didn't have psychiatrists. So in the camps, I had only two choices, whether I want to live or I want to die. If I wanted to die, I had to give up my hope. I had to, I, I, I just had to give in to me, to, to the desperation and everything. If I wanted to live, then I had to create some meaning to my life. And the meaning to my life is the positivity. I said I had to live because I want to go back and see my parents. I didn't know if I would do. I wanted to live, maybe to talk about the terrible things that were done to us. Uh, I wanted to live for the sake of life. I wanted my life. I wanted my family. I didn't want to be pushed into a bad grave. So, so you see what I mean? I had to use everything that I can think of it. And I talk about my methods here in that new book, you know, what I use. But that will answer more in detail your question. So, do you have any other questions? Um, how has this experience changed you? change me? Oh, that experience, it's impossible not to change you, because uh, suddenly I have seen life nakedness. The, the, uh, the other part, uh, I grew up with love, with everything. Now I have seen hatred, cruelty, violence. Um, how did I change me? Um, I have seen the horrible, um, the, 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 the terrible thing if you don't recognize uh, if you don't recognize evil what proportions it can take uh, I did not I, I understood for the first time what my father told me about to have forgiveness and to have tolerance and, and love in your life I have seen the, the value of those principles but when I came home and my mother said, my mother noticed the change in me. That's impossible. After I have seen, uh, I grew up suddenly. You know, my mother said, you, you, you are a teenager. You are. A, I was 19 and a half when I came home, and you are still a young, a young person. Uh, you act like a, like a, like a, a 50 year old woman. I said, no, mom. I feel like I'm a hundred years old, not fifty. The things that I have seen um, and I had to overcome uh, taught me 
big lessons in life. So, but uh, when I came home, I was determined, as you know, to uh, to uh, to get my education, which I thought nobody could take me. We were very poor, and I worked hard for everything. You know, I didn't have money, and I said to my mom, "No money, money or no money, I want to study medicine." And then I studied by on my own. It was uh, it was a hard a hard thing. Uh, because I needed scholarship, you know, and uh, and I needed to have exams, uh, many exams, and uh, I was lucky I met my husband after I came home in the, in the summer. In the summer of 1946, I met my husband at a university, and uh, he. Um, and uh, um, he was in his last year of medical school. My husband is a time neurosurgeon. Uh, he was in his last year of medical school. And when I told him that I want to go to medical school and I want scholarship, he said, oh my God, you have a hard time. Uh, you have to, in addition to all the exams that I, take, I took, I, I, was, I came back at the end of October and I, by the time, by the end of May, I took all the exams necessary in order to even finish my high school. And I studied on my own, and I borrowed books. I, I went through fire, you know, day and night my life was. But, and I thought, okay, I have no everything, I'm going to go and register to medical school. And it was no, 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 because I, I found out that it's a big exam of admission, you know, and uh, and uh, with very different from different subjects from anatomy, biology, physics, with, with chemistry, organic chemistry, uh, and uh, biology, and anatomy. And uh, I met my husband and I told him that uh, you know that I want to go to to uh, to, to go to this exam. He said, you know, if you <coughs> Don't start studying right now, tomorrow. There are 900 students from 150 places. You want to have scholarship in addition to that? You have to have academically, you have to qualify because, because economically I did, I didn't have anything, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so, uh, so my husband uh, said, uh, I can provide, I said, I don't have money for books. He said, my husband said, I provided the book, I'm a veteran, I know what you, what you need. And even I can give you a little suggestion, uh, a little a tutoring with the free of charge in, in, uh, in, in, um, in chemistry. And, uh, uh, and, and he was very helpful to me. I, I think that I would have had really trouble to get to medical school. But then he was helping me, you know. Uh, with uh, with uh, difficult subjects of organic chemistry, that's a real difficult subject. And then he said, I can tell you these other things, you need help. And my life, you know, was, I had three months to prepare for this huge exam, oral and written test. And I studied day and night. My husband is my witness, uh, and he was my strictest professor that I ever had. And uh, and then uh, at the by the end of summer, uh, in the, by by fall, I was ready for that big exam, and uh, I did two things of that thing, that year. First of all, after three months of uh, being so much together, uh, we realized that my hus my husband asked me to marry him. So so when I got to medical school, uh, I was a married woman. And I started in the fall of 1946, my first year of medical school. So it's it just, when I came home, what changed me, you know, a great deal when I came home. I said to my mom, I, when I said to my mom, I want to go to medical school, he said, oh, you are a dreamer, how are you going to do this? I said, mom, I was fighting with death in the camps. And I was fenced in his bed, and I was victorious. I said, now I don't think that anything is worse. I can do anything that I put my mind to. I had this in me. I said, so that 
big deal that I had to fight every day to stay alive. So here, I just have to study. That's much easier to study every day, you know, and not having that fear, you know. And, and also, in order to survive, one thing I had to do, and that's very important, to control my fear. Because fear is the worst, your worst enemy. Now, if I would have every day fear and say, oh, I don't know, I, 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 what is that? Can I say, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. You put the negative in it. So I said, what is going to be next day? I don't know but I'm going to fight to live, and I'm going to live. So see, this is what, what comes the positive, uh, the positive attitude. So naturally, I, uh, I had a tremendous self-confidence. I can do anything, no matter what I, what I experience. There's nothing that is going to be hard for me to do. I, I, it's going to be hard, but I can do it, you see? So, so you see, uh, those experiences change. Now, what, have, what also changed that before these experiences, I didn't have nightmares. But after I came home, I had horrible nightmares for many years. And even now, I'm not free of nightmares. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, I have from, from time to time nightmares. I'm screaming, and my husband has to shake me up because, you see, because the, those terrible uh, but my, my horrific memories from the cat are buried in the depths of my soul. I cannot take them out, you know. And from time to time, they surface and manifest themselves in different forms. Um, yeah, so they also present themselves in my dream world with nightmares. So you see, uh, you after experience like that, you can never be quite the same as you were before. It's impossible. So, um, so do you have any other questions right now? I have just one last quick question for you. So yes. for Claire's project, she's writing a diary from your point of view. Do you have any suggestions for her writing from your perspective? Oh, can you repeat that? Can you repeat the question? Sure. Do you have any suggestions for Claire writing from your point of view for her project? Oh, if I have any suggestion for your project. So what do you exactly want to do in this project? You have to tell me and then I can see if I have any suggestions. Um, well, for the final project, I was going to have a bulletin board that had like note cards with facts on them and then have like a few diary entries on there and some quotes from you. So uh, quotes from me? A quote from me. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, if you want some quotes, I can give you some quotes. Would you like to? <laughs> and and sure. the quotes that I mentioned here, I'm going to repeat that enough. Um, uh, uh, fear is your worst enemy. That's one quote. Um, uh, uh, faith, hope, and love are the strong pillars of life. Awesome. Uh, and let's see. If you want to achieve your dreams, you have to work hard for it. And no dreams are impossible if you believe in them. I can quote that from my own experience. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for talking with us. Yeah. Well, it was nice to meet you and uh, chat with and you. To see you. And to see you. Yes, and to and see, see you to too. See me. <laughs> yeah. And we're so and looking forward to having you talk to all the seventh graders on May 5th. And, yes, and, and then, then I can, you know, uh, share more. I can yeah. talk in detail about yeah. my life. Now, on, uh, on the 5th of May, mm -hmm. are you going then to call us? Uh, we call you? How is it going? Sure, we can call you. Is that okay? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Are, you, are you calling us? 
Yes, we'll call you. Yeah. We are already connected. We have the app, you know, with uh, your contact yes. because Mr. Maurer has contacted us earlier, you know. Right, he helped us. We borrowed his computer. Now, no, no, no. you want to uh, you want to record this and you want to record my other presentation or how do we do? What would oh. you like? Do you care? Is it okay if we record it? Yes. Yes. Okay. If you want to record it, you can record it. Okay, I thank you. Know. If you can record it, I don't know, you know what the possibilities are with your equipment. Okay, I'll find out. <laughs> but okay. but you will find out. Okay. And then see you on the, when, when did you agree? That May 5th. See you on May 5th at 11. Yeah, uh, 10.45, 10.45, 10.45, uh -huh. May 5th. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, have it's a good day. Nice talking to you. You too. Good luck, good luck for your project. Thanks, she said good luck for your project. Oh, thank you. And then, then I want a copy of what your, your, uh, of your project. Okay, we'll send yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. okay. Great. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.